Okay. You are ready. Okay, thank you, David. Uh, this is the um, September 9th meeting of the of 2020 meeting of Heritage Commission here in Lebanon, New Hampshire. Mm -hmm. I'm Rob Welsh. I'm chair of the commission. Um, I'd like to turn it over to David to give us a review of the meeting procedures for NHRSA 91 slash A or dash A, right to know. Can I call on you, David, for that? Yes, sure. Uh, good evening. Due to the coronavirus pandemic and pursuant to Governor Sununu's emergency order number 12, issued on March 23rd, 2020, in accordance with Executive Order 2020-04, the Heritage Commission is authorized to meet electronically without a quorum physically present in the same location. <clears throat> Please note that there is no physical location to observe and listen contemporaneously to this meeting. However, in accordance with Emergency Order number 12, we have taken action to provide public access to the meeting by telephone with potential additional access by video, provide public notice of the necessary information for accessing the meeting and provide a mechanism for the public to alert the public body during the meeting if there are problems with access. For this meeting, Microsoft Teams is being used as the communication platform. All members of the Heritage Commission have the ability to communicate contemporaneously and the public has access to contemporaneously listen and participate in the meeting by visiting LebanonNH.gov slash live and clicking on the pertinent listed meeting. Instructions on how to attend are provided on the web page to assist in the preparation of the meeting minutes and to ensure all participants are aware of who is participating. All speakers are, are asked to identify themselves before beginning to speak. <clears throat> In order to ensure the best possible transmission of the meeting content, it is suggested that you disable the camera on your chosen device to reduce the video feed and increase the available bandwidth for all attendees. To improve sound quality and reduce the amount of feedback in the system, please ensure your microphones are muted unless you are asking a question or making a comment. If anyone has a problem with access during the course of the meeting, please email planning at LebanonNH.gov. Staff will do its best to address the issue. In the event that there are technical difficulties and we are unable to hold the meeting, it will be adjourned and rescheduled. All votes taken during this meeting shall be done by roll call vote. The meeting will begin by taking a roll call attendance. When each member states their name, please state whether there is anyone in the room with you during this meeting, which is required under RSA 91A and I will turn it back to the chair. OK, thank you, David, for that. Um, so first item of business is to do a roll call vote. Can I turn that back over to you, David? You're better at that than I am. Sure. Uh, <clears throat> Robert Welsh. I'm present. Um, Sarah is in and out of the room, but I have the speaker, the headphones on, so she's not hearing anything or seeing anything of the meeting. OK. Hi, Mimi. Hi. Mimi Haynes, are you present? I am present. And are Good. you alone? I am with my dog. OK. So Linda Cole. Linda, you are muted. Sorry about that. Yeah. I'm here all by okay. myself. Rebecca Book. I am here. My husband is in the room, but he's also an alternate member. OK. Uh, Karen Zook. <laughs> Bruce Bronner. Raymond Buck. If you need him, he's here. I don't think we need him. I think we've got, and then Fran Hanchett. Yeah. Here. Okay, so I think we've got one, two, three, four, five. Wow. We've got at least five, which is exceeds That's a quorum. That's a quorum, yeah, yeah. Good. That's a quorum, so we don't need Ray. Okay. You can vote if you want, Ray, or not. It's up to you. That's okay. Okay. He's, he's going to put his headphones on. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so we're so interesting. He wants to be off of us, or or is he putting his headphones to hear us? Well, he's had a long day. He stepped on his glasses, and one of the lenses oh, is out. It, it, he's a mess. <laughs> okay. Well, we don't need, if you feel like that, Ray, we don't need you. <laughs> <laughs> that's fine no but we've got a quorum which is the key thing because we've got um one agenda item that we need to take care of that it has to have a, a quorum for so everything else is fine 
Okay, uh, the next item is uh, approval of minutes. You should have gotten the minutes for the the August 12th meeting, our last meeting. Did anybody have any concerns or questions about the the minutes as written? written? Nope. Um, if nobody has any, I would entertain a motion to amend uh, to approve as given. There were a couple of corrections uh, on page okay. two. No, okay. Uh, numbers 45 and 47 that David brought up earlier. I don't know whether that that suffices as it was a spelling. It was a spelling okay. of a name and then we I left out somebody in the roll call vote for adjournment, but that was those were simple fixes. OK, can you fix those easily enough? I heard, yes. Yes, so OK. Jeremy Rutter, a T T E R yes, instead yeah, of D G. T -T, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Okay. And we added uh, the name Mimi Haynes. Yeah, at uh, page three, number nine. Oh yeah, yeah, that's right. <laughs> okay. Um, anything further? Okay, then I would entertain a motion to approve as amended. I make a motion that we approve the minutes as amended. We have a motion on the floor from Becky Book. Um, do we have a second? I think that was Mimi. Was you were you seconding? I think we lost her. I think we lost, think her. We lost her. Okay. Um, okay. Well, I'm Linda Cole, and I'll second. <laughs> okay. Oh, Mimi, are you back? Oh, Can you hear us now? We can't hear you. Unmute yourself. I'm sorry. I don't know where I went. I, I that's second right. the motion. <laughs> okay, that's fine. Okay. All those in favor, we'll go do a roll call. I'll let you do this, David. Sure. Um, <clears throat> Robert Welsh. Uh, I vote yes to approve. Mimi Haynes. Yes. Linda Cole? Yes. Rebecca Book? Yes. Uh, Fran Hanchett? Yes. Raymond Book? Is he he's not going to participate? Uh, correct. Okay. Okay. Karen Zook? That's enough. No. Or Bruce Bronner. She's not, they're not here. Okay. Got it. Okay. Okay. Um, so it's approved, right? Okay, we'll move on to the next item on the agenda, which is the a public review. This is City of Lebanon. This is the library. Do we have someone from the project that's going to present for this? Do we need somebody from the library, David? <clears throat> yes, Jason Lacombe is on, I believe. Jason, are you there? We don't hear you if you're if you're there. Oh, Jason is here, but I don't see him. I I mean I see his icon, but I don't hear him. Jason, if you're there, would you please turn your mute on your mute off? Can you hear me now? Yes, yeah. that's awesome. Yeah. Can we see I, your I, face? That's good. Okay, that's awesome. We just like to put a name to the face, right? Oh, that, that's fine. It's been a long time since you folks have seen me. Uh, am I all set to dive in? Yeah, no, or? Can you spell your, your name? Oh, actually, I can see it. Never mind. You're on your, on your screen. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So tell us your role in this, Jason. So uh, I'm Jason Lacombe. I'm the president of SMP Architecture, and I'm the project architect for the library renovation project. Mm -hmm. um, okay. So we've been working with the library for about a year and a half through some initial planning, and now we're into um, final design and engineering, uh, and we're going through. So we just issued a design development set, so we still have construction drawings and a lot of details to finalize. Um, but the scope of the project is generally uh, resolved. You know, there are always the few questions, but um, we have a we have a pretty good handle on the project that we'd like to present to you. Mm -hmm. So I, I wasn't sure if I had a. Yep. Sorry, before you get started, I think the, the first step that the 
commission needs to take relative to this application is to deem it complete, uh, okay. complete enough to accept jurisdiction and commence review. Uh, staff has reviewed the material that was received, uh, and we recommend that the board or the commission uh, should find that the application is com complete enough to accept jurisdiction and commence review. Mm -hmm. So you just need a motion and a second. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I looked over it as well, and other th I have a few questions that I couldn't tell if they were in what we were what we received or not. It looked to me like the planning office has seen everything that they need to see, so therefore we should be able to go ahead with it. So I'd like to encourage us to um, to have a motion that we accept it as complete, based on the decision of the planning office. Becky, could I call on you to give oh, us a to certainly. put that motion on the table? I make a motion that we consider the uh, application for the uh, change in the front steps of the library to be complete. Great. And we need a second for that. I'll second it. OK, Linda seconds that. Um, could we have a roll call vote on that, David? Yes. Uh, Robert Welsh. I approve. Mimi Haynes. I think that was a yes. Um, yes. <laughs> okay. Becky Buck. Yes. Linda Cole. Yes. Fran Hanship. Yes. Okay, that's five to zero. Five to zero. Good. Okay, so we've been we've considered deemed it complete for the purposes of deciding on it. Okay. Yes. And now okay. Mr. Lacombe can make his presentation. Okay. Great. Go for it, Jason. So I did put together a PowerPoint to just try to be focused and walk everyone through the project. Do I okay. do I have a time limit that I should be aware of? Might take 10 or so minutes. Oh yeah, that's fine. Absolutely okay. fine. You can take longer than that if you need to. Okay. Well, let, let me see if I can fire this up and share my screen. I'll get the technology set. I'm sorry. <laughs> I Trust me, you're in a better be... shape than most of us are, so don't <laughs> yeah. worry about it. This is the one commission that you're going to be dealing with where most of us are well over your age set. Oh, nice. <laughs> oh we could share okay. the screen, I think. Can you, yeah. This is can great. You... All right. So um, I assume you can still see me through the webcam. I'll try to. <laughs> Not talk yeah, we can see you down at the much. bottom. That's fine. Perfect. Um, okay, so as we know, this is uh, the Lebanon Public Library on the green, um, our historic library. There are really, um, I'd like to do two things. One is give you a general overview for what the scope of the project is. Um, so very high level, we can get into details and then talk about four points that I believe might be of um, particular consideration for the commission. And then certainly we can we can get into questions and and go from there. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. So um, project overview really had um, three core goals that we were trying to uh, address in the design. One was the patron experience, um, and this is a variety of um, different levels from access to materials to comfort in reading to just general flow of space, um, but Overall, uh, improving the patron experience was an important part of the design. Mm -hmm. uh, functional layout, which also ties in with patron experience, but really this keyed in with addressing meeting issues or lack thereof, um, as well as just how the library staff operates uh, was a key piece. And then the third one was HVAC issues. We're talking um, about a building that has systems that have um, in a lot of ways outlived their useful life. There are some newer pieces of equipment, um, but really addressing HVAC issues. So HVAC can, issues also, go ahead. Can I interrupt you for a second? HVAC sure. stands for what? He heating, ventilation, and air conditioning. Okay. So the, the mechanical systems for the building. Mm -hmm. um, and that ties in with patron experience. Sometimes it's too hot, sometimes it's too cold, but it also ties in with staff. So really these three core pieces are um, intermixed. 
So walking through the project, and uh, um, I'm assuming you can see my cursor if I do this. How about a laser pointer? There we go. How about yeah, this? Yeah, that's good. All I can right. see that. That's great. Mm -hmm. So um, on the left side of the screen is the original 1909 section of the library that uh, I suspect we're all quite familiar with. The green is just off the page on the side. And then in the back section is the 1984 edition where the children's wing um, primarily uh, lives, as well as the ADA um, compliant access into the library space. Um, so in regards to the front 1909 section, we're really working to maintain um, the, the current uh, view. So very minimal work that we're doing um, in terms of just integrating some of the mechanical systems, uh, hopefully some lighting, that's some, some of the items that we're looking at. But generally, the front reading room uh, and the circulation space as well as that center rotunda are going to remain as is. We are repurposing this um, office space for a group study room, so more of a public room, whether it's for a small meeting or a private study space. Mm -hmm. Um, the real core part of the project is uh, integrating this new circulation stair right in the center of the building. So currently, uh, anyone who's familiar with the library realizes that um, sometimes you can't get there from here and you have to take a, a circuitous route um, to get up to the second floor, then down to the basement without uh, using the elevator. So this creates both functional issues and it also creates wayfinding issues for how the collection uh, lays out in the library. So this was a really important piece that um, the trustees grasped onto as um, an important idea for really changing the function and the flow of the library. Mm -hmm. What that allowed us to do is there, there is currently a stair here, which is how um, one of the main ways that you access the, the uh, basement level. That allows us to remove that stair. And then we can create a restroom up on this floor, which was um, uh, something that the library has struggled with for a long time. Um, what that allows us to do is then repurpose the two restrooms in the children's area and create a family restroom and the mother's room that are really um, support the children's functions and the, the gatherings that happens there. Uh, so this would really be the primary public restroom for all the adult collection, and then we have dedicated children's restrooms. Where where is the door on that? The public restroom for adults? It would be it would be the existing door right off of the main stack space. Oh right, okay, okay. So when you're out in the stack area, it would actually look no different. Maybe no. a sign. I just want to. I'm sorry. I don't want to speak uh, on top of you. Um, no, nope, it's okay. I just want to make sure what was the concern with the bathrooms of adding in your bathroom? Um, so the the bathrooms are a twofold issue. One is just straight up quantity. There there's not sufficient restrooms to meet the need uh, okay. for the library and the population. The other concern is the only two restrooms in the current library are off the children's space. So if you're downstairs in a meeting room, you have to walk up the stair come around, come down into the children's space. So it was a convenience thing. And then there is some security and safety concerns just about um, you know, how we look to subtly isolate and, and keep the kids separated from the rest of the, um, the adults in the, in the space. The, the general premise in library planning is if we can separate the kids area where if you don't have kids, you, there, you have no reason to be back there. It's just an inherently um, a, a safer environment. Uh, I never like to overplay that, but it's a reality that we have to deal with. Okay. Does that answer you. your question? Yes, it does. Thank you so much. Okay. And uh, actually, is it also per code for the number of occupants, or is it really uh, like um, how the space would be better if we had this third? Other than what you've said, is I guess is it a code thing as well, or no? Um, it it was. Uh, it was partially code driven, so you, you on the based on the occupancy levels, um, you were one short of what you needed to, but it was existing, so we could have not addressed this by code. But practically speaking, it's just a need that the library and the patrons have been asking for for a long time. So 
moving downstairs, again, here's our 1909 section. Um, by removing that stair, that also gives us um, an opportunity to create a second restroom on the lower level. And this mm -hmm. restroom would really be convenient and support the function of the new meeting space. And then here's that new stair that we're inserting. So down on the lower level is primarily a large meeting room, which it is today, and a staff room, which it is today. We're just reorganizing these spaces a little bit so that the new stair connects through this corridor to the old historic stair up on the front of the library. And then the restroom and uh, break room uh, separate off of that. So it really makes this level a lot um, more usable for the spaces that the library is trying to, for the meetings they're trying to host. Jason, excuse me, is there still yep. an elevator on to that goes down to the basement? Absolutely. So we oriented the new stair just opposite the elevator. Yeah. So there'll be okay. a joint landing and that's part of simplifying the wayfinding. But the sure. existing elevator we're going to keep in place. Good. As somebody who's a bit lame, I like to go on an elevator rather than a stairway, particularly in that building. Sure. Uh, because <laughs> right. Because oh, yeah. I don't want to end up falling down the stairs, and uh, so that's that's my concern. To the, you know, as an older person, so yeah. that's great. No, absolutely, yep. We want to keep it. So everything we're doing also works to make it um, make the space more functional and accessible. Um, so, is so, there going to be a restroom? This new restroom, the one that's in blue, is that going yep. to be on both floors? Correct. Yeah. So we so when the oh, library awesome. is complete. Yeah. We'll have a restroom on the lower level and we'll have two on the main floor, one mm -hmm. dedicated for the kids, and then the mother's room would be in addition to that. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah. I have a question. Becky? Yeah, the go two, ahead. The two new bathrooms that are indicated as blue, will they yep. be handicap accessible? Absolutely. Okay, thank you. Okay, so moving upstairs, again, there's that new stair that we're inserting. Um, so upstairs will still house the teen collection and additional stack space. There's currently a small office located right here in the center of the room that divides the space. And we're going to remove that and locate the office space in the old historic room of the um, of the library, which is currently underutilized. The collection's been moved out um, quite some time ago. And by removing the existing stair, where we can repurpose this floor space um, for a new study room off of the teen space. So this helps with additional programming. It um, gives the library another functional space um, that they co don't currently have, and it makes this uh, stack and teen area a lot more flexible in terms of how the collection evolves and how the library wants to use it and grow into the space. The the mezzanine, the balcony out here, which overlooks the historic, is going to be where the historic collection is is um, currently will be relocated to. Well, that's really good because the the current design is that it's in a place where you can't get access to it. Correct. Yeah, and that's something that they've they've struggled with for um, quite some time. Yes, I know they have. Yeah, that's great. OK, any other questions so far? We'll move on. So now the detailed items that I think might be of more concern for um, the commission. Like I said, there are four of them. So the exterior stairs, those original 1909 um, granite stairs on the front, um, some Walkway lighting that we're adding at the ADA um, path into the 1984 edition. Um, we didn't talk specifically about it, but there is some rooftop equipment that's going to be located um, up there and then uh, some additional windows. And I put a question mark on the windows. There is one new window that we're adding that impacts the exterior. Um, but budget considering, you know, we're, we're going to see how the budget goes. Um, and if we have the ability to, we'd like to upgrade um, some of the windows in the 1984 section. They're older, they're a little bit leaky, they haven't failed yet, but if we have an opportunity to uh, replace them, we would uh, like to take that um, and we would replace them in kind. So let's get into that a little more detail. So back to our plan. I always like to orient everyone. So there's that exterior stair, again, the green 
um, is off uh, on the left of the page. So I rotated the graphic. I try not to, I apologize, but I think this makes it clear. So on the left side is the existing as the stair currently is. Um, and then on the right side is a plan of the proposed. So the challenge that we have with the granite stairs is this top landing piece is a little bit too narrow where when you open the door, you actually have to back down the stairs. Yeah. And while they haven't had any serious uh, incidents, they have had a couple of minor incidents where people have fallen um, while trying to get in. So it's really not an ideal circumstance. We have the benefit of this library where a fair amount of the patrons still use this front door. So um, it's, a, it's really a, a pretty significant safety issue. So what we're proposing to do is to dismantle, label, all the granite pieces and dismantle the stair and insert these shaded pieces, which would be new granite to um, make the landing larger. And then we would reconstruct in the same orientation, the original stair. And the, the goal here would be to clearly show the new granite from the old. I think the likelihood that we would match that old granite is is, is pretty minimal. Um, we want to be close, but we don't want an exact match. And that's really just a little trickery of the eye where, um, you know, we want to show what the original pieces were. And, you know, certainly if one wanted to, it would be reversible. Uh, mm -hmm. While I couldn't necessarily see that circumstance. And then this, um, existing handrail we would remove and we would do two um, more appropriate iron rails um, down flanking down the sides so overall it creates a uh, more of a well it creates a safer stair so i did a little section through um, and this is the style rail that we're looking at so a simple molded profile top something that you know, is more in keeping with the historic building, but not trying to fake anyone out that it's 110 years old. So it, it's a little subtlety trick that we were playing with that. Uh, and then there's an image of the stair as it exists today. And oh, I clicked too fast. And there's an image of the granite that we would propose. So you can see the slightly off shaded elements that we would add in. Um, and what I realized after I did this image is uh, the handrails aren't shown. I apologize for that. Um, but, but there would but be you are going to add those. Yes, there are going to be two handrails flanking the sides, um, roughly in line with these joints that you see in the, the lower granite pieces. Yeah. Um, and then the walkway would obviously be rebuilt and, and repaired uh, up to it. So it'll be a subtle difference. Um, you notice that these these large blocks with the lights would remain. We would put newer um, large blocks so that the termination and wraparound of the stair would be as it is today, just moved out. Um, and the distance is two feet, four inches, if that matters. Everyone clear it, on? I, I have a question about this, Jason. Sure. What I have always found to be the problem with the stairs is you get up to the top and there's a railing and so forth that's sort of in that you have to hang on to. But when you yes. get up there where the door is, there's really not much space to move around. This is going to give you that platform to move around and open the door and get around the door and inside. It is, is that, absolutely. Yep. Yeah. That would be awesome. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions on what we're proposing? No, All I right. think this is a beautiful it's design. Really nice. Yes, and that Thanks. actually adding these pieces sort of rebalance the front steps even more. I don't know if it makes I sense. I think so. I <laughs> yeah, think the so too. The volumes look really good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yeah, I, I, it looks nice. I'm always on the side of trying to do minimal changes to a building, but at the same time, it's a public building and buildings are meant to be used and be safe. I know we have a ramp on the side, but. Right. There's something very people like to use that front entrance a lot. So. OK, well, I appreciate that. Thank you. Yeah. And uh, as I said, Jason, I think this will this design will make that front entrance seem actually safer to people. Yeah. Oh, it, it 
I mean, people of my age, I'm 70, and uh, I'm thinking, you know, when I was in my 50s, I felt it uncomfortable. And I'm really glad to have, see this change happen. I, since you're going through the other changes in the building, I think that's awesome. Excellent. Okay, moving on to the next uh, item is uh, on that ADA walkway up to the mm -hmm. 84 edition. We're just looking at adding a couple of exterior lights. Um, it's It's not a horrible situation, but that walkway really is not particularly well lit. And when you get into winter months where it gets dark relatively early and the library is still open, um, it's been noted as a as another safety issue. So mm -hmm. uh, what we're looking at is something simple. So uh, here's not the best photo of the that side of the building, um, but where these red uh, sections fall, just a couple of small bollard lights. So they're full cutoff fixtures, they're dark sky compliant. It's just to illuminate the walking surface. Mm -hmm. We would tuck them right behind the railing. So all these existing railings are gonna remain. So we would just tuck them right behind. Mm -hmm. And this is the style fixture that we're looking at. So something simple, um, something that would really disappear, but um, give a really nice light and it's able to throw forward. That was a particular importance so that we could light as much of the walkway without having to add up um you know an excessive amount of these will they be light sense sensitive so that they come on automatically um they are not uh we would have to look at the control system i believe the library has a an exterior lighting control system so it would probably be more timer driven um mm -hmm. in okay. coordination with the library operational hours um Rather than rather than just photo sensor. Mm -hmm. Okay. It might be it might be an import um, an interesting point to have it be on at night outside business hours for people who want to return books there. Oh sure. Uh, there is a book drop at that entrance. I had to think about that for a minute. Yes. Yeah. But there is one also, I believe, at the front of the building and I think that's lit. Yes. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, Just there, a thought. <laughs> the the front step lights are um, do work and they they will remain working. And then we yeah. have street lights. So mm -hmm. well the book drop is very important for the community. I just dropped off some books today. Mm -hmm. at that on the side of the building on the Bank Street side and I was really impressed today when I walked from my car which I parked right in front and then I got out and I walked up the ramp and was able to get there without any st any hassle at all it's very very convenient and uh, so I think those things are having them lit lit lighted at night is really helpful okay Do you know if the there are lights? I, I should ask Sean, but there are lights underneath this canopy where the book drop is currently located. Do you know if those stay on all night? I don't know. I've never paid any attention to that. That's my okay. issue. But yeah, um, I would think these lights a, would operate the same. You know, there must be a way to have some lights out there all times so that you know these these you had these lights pointed down to the ground is that is that right absolutely yes so there's nothing wrong with that i think that's great okay uh so the next item was windows um so on this side of the building this is the side that faces the um the post, post office. office yep so it's you know it's about as back to the building as you're gonna get. Um, there's the existing mechanical equipment. So the window that we're looking at is um, into the mother's room and it falls roughly here. Mm -hmm. And it, it you know, very simple, um, I realize the graphic is simple, um, but it's, it's gonna be one of these style windows to match the side that faces the apartment building uh, in the same proportion, same type, um, and it's really just to allow some daylight into that mother's room to make it, yeah. um, you know, a little more habitable. Sure. So, and, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh, and, and again, if the budget permits the opportunity to replace some of these um, 
casement style windows with new units is something that we would we would certainly look at but they would be replaced in kind right down to the finish so it's really just a, a performance and maintenance um item when these are all are, are these all in the the dwinnell edition they are yes yeah we're okay. we're not touching any of the windows in the 1909 section yeah when you say Maybe. mother's room is this the one that uh, for breastfeeding or is this a family room uh it, it would be for breastfeeding or moms with very young infants okay um do you know what is at what height could someone peek inside there <laughs> um I think uh, so. I, I th somebody tall might be able to get their head just above the sill. Yes. Is there a way to um, have it sort of frosted or absolutely yep. obscured or? <laughs> yep. We we would probably look to do an obscure or frosted film on the glass. <clears throat> That's all. I'll look. At, I'll look at that in more detail though. That's a good point. Okay. Okay. Sorry. Um, any other questions on that? No, that sounds great. And then the final piece was some exterior equipment. So going back to this photo, these units are going to be removed as part of the HVAC, the mechanical system um, improvement. <clears throat> and we're going to look at putting two units, actually three, there's a smaller unit back here, <clears throat> excuse me, on the roof above that new stair section. So just opposite the elevator. We're also um, providing a new roof hatch in the, that office space up on the second floor for access to maintain the equipment and just clean out roof drains. And mm -hmm. it's just a good idea. So um, this is the uh, the Google Street View. You got to have <laughs> There's that. Someone there. eating an ice cream. There's somebody. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know who that is. Um, <laughs> Doing so. It right. So it's it, it's not entirely clear. However, I, I think you might see just the top of those units right around there from this <laughs> view. So it's very minimal, but you know, if you're walking on the other side of the street and you look up and you happen to be looking uh, at the top of the roof, you may see um, the units set back. We push them back as far as we could to the elevator shaft, but just given clearances and maintenance and, you know, sort of the, the logistics of it, um, mm. w w I think you'll still see them. I think that it's okay, considering that the exchange, <clears throat> those ugly units that were on the lawn, stuck in the corner, uh, getting rid of those uh, is a delight, uh, and this this is fine. Okay, excellent. And I agree with Becky entirely. I think what goes on in the roof is so trivial compared to what getting things off of the lawn is just, you know, that's a great benefit. Yeah. Okay, excellent. That was all I had. <laughs> that was great. Thank you. This is very, very useful, Jason. You've really gone through a lot of uh, the various aspects of the project you're you're proposing and uh, I think this makes perfect sense it I like I really like having that that front stairwell or stair steps moved out so we have more space on the top there I think that will be just wonderful actually mm -hmm. yeah that, that'll be that'll be a, a huge improvement and a a, a weight off of Sean Fleming's shoulders. He, I, I think he, he, he really worries about that a lot. Mm -hmm. I'm sure he does. Um, no, th this seems like uh, wonderful. David, uh, can you walk through what are the steps are now that we've heard the project? What do we need to vote on? Okay. Um, yes, since, since, the, since the commission doesn't exercise its regulatory authority, uh, all that often um, we did include the 
the regulations, section section 408 of the zoning ordinance, in with the staff uh, memo, just as a yep. reminder. Uh, I had to review that myself. <clears throat> and so basically the board is it's been determined that the this proposed project does require a certificate of approval from the commission mm -hmm. and the criteria for review are spelled out in section 408.6 and it cross references back to the purpose section of this zoning overlay district in 408.2 um, but briefly, 408.6A, the historical, so in determining whether or not to grant a certificate of approval, the Heritage Commission shall keep in mind the purposes set forth in section 408.2 herein and shall consider, among other appropriate factors, the following. A, the <coughs> historical or architectural value of a building and its setting. B, in connection with additions, repair, or restoration of any existing building, the compatibility of the exterior design, arrangement, texture, and materials proposed to be used in relationship to the existing building, its setting, and the historic district as a whole. And C, the size, scale, and design of proposed construction in relation to the existing surroundings, including consideration of such factors as a building's overall height, width, street frontage, number of stories, type of roof, facade openings, and architectural details. So those are the those are the key criteria. Uh, you certainly have some uh, flexibility to require um, certain improvements to, to, to ensure that they are uh, completed pursuant to the Secretary of Interior standards for rehabilitation and guidelines for rehabilitating historic buildings. Uh, it would it would appear uh, that the proposal uh, largely complies with those with those standards. Um, and you I have a question on that, D David. Yep. Sorry to interrupt. Um, the the only part that really changes the facade of the building is the stairway pulling it out by what is that a couple feet, Jason? Uh, two foot four inches, two and a half feet. Well, yeah, but that two and a half feet is a really valuable bit of real estate on the front and making it a much more useful, particularly for an aging population in town. So I think that's a really wonderful use of it. So the question is, do, can we, we can approve it even though it is a change to the building. We can approve this kind of change without any problem, right? Absolutely. If you feel that the, the proposed changes are compatible with the exterior design of the existing building. That's the language I needed. I feel yep. it did very much is. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. OK, so. So um, one more item. This is a yep. public hearing. I don't see anyone on, but I would ask you as the chair to state that this is a public hearing and okay. offer the opportunity for anyone uh, participating to voice comments and if not then we can you can close the public hearing and the commission can yep. begin to deliberate okay i would like to invite anybody in the public who's listening in or are watching in to uh, have if they have comments or thoughts or questions or whatever uh, this is a time to do it so just identify yourself and uh, um, we can have you speak They're calling in from out of town. <laughs> they are. 1 800 number. <laughs> yeah. Have you checked Hearing... your car insurance lately? Yeah. <laughs> Hearing none, I think you could close the public hearing and the commission okay. can begin to deliberate. Okay. I will close the public hearing, but we will deliberate on the specific changes that Jason has outlined. Um, I just want to add a few comments. Thank you, Jason, for your presentation. It was very, very informative. I got a real clear sense of what you guys want to do. And I think the design that you've outlined is just super. I Thank really you. liked having that space in front of the door, front door. I always find that tricky. I especially find it tricky in wet and sloppy weather. And uh, as I've gotten older and my knees don't work as well as they used to, I find I don't like to go through the children's section and take the elevator up to get to the main floor. 
I'd rather go in the front door, and I think that this will make it a lot easier for people like me who have a problem with knees and things like that. So I think that's a wonderful idea. So I will open up the the discussion to anybody who has any thoughts, positive or negative, about this proposal. I think I've already voiced um, my content. <laughs> yeah. I, th sure. I think it's a wonderful project. I think so too. I agree with you completely. Okay. Thank you, Mimi. Um, Linda, do you have anything? Yeah, I, I think it's a great idea. Um, you know, I think that uh, what we saw at the West Lebanon Library and how it wasn't taken care of was really a uh, an awful thing. So I'm glad yeah. to see that they're continuing to to maintain that library. Yeah. And Becky, what about you? You've got muted. You're muted. Sorry, there, there we go. I'm very happy to see that the front steps uh, remains the, the classic revival uh, style, and uh, it doesn't change that uh, feeling at all. And it gives us the opportunity for two nice urns of flowers on those yes, extra exactly. blocks. So absolutely. Uh, <laughs> Yeah. Yes, yes. So I, I really am very pleased, and I'm, and I'm also pleased that we're not changing the, the size of the windows. We're adding a window, but it will be the same size. So that seems to uh, be in the same uh, theme as the rest of the building. Yeah. 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 Um, did anyone else have any thoughts? Then, our next, then if I understand correctly, David, we need to approve the project or do we have, have an intermediary step before then? Uh, I have a, I, I, if I may, I have a one question for sure. Jason. Go for it. Um, mm -hmm. You mentioned on the budget and the windows, the, the new window will be installed regardless. And if Correct. budget allows, there will be replacement of some other existing windows on that uh the dwinell edition is that correct that is but, correct but yeah. the new window um into the into the family restroom or the or the mother's room is is part of the project and part of the project budget it, it is currently yes yeah okay and i and i see fran's uh fran hanchett has raised her hand here yes fran go ahead fran i just have a question they sure. showed a window in the ladies room upstairs right yep is there another window in the other one that's going to be below it or above it um let me back up so currently the the new restrooms that stair is right behind these two windows. Oh, you can't see my screen. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah. What what am I doing? Um, all right. Now you can see my screen. Correct. Yes. Yep. Okay. So currently that stair occupies right behind these two windows. Mm -hmm. And when we remove it, the floor would fall right around that band. So both restrooms, the new restrooms will have windows. Um, the one in the basement, the window will be up high, uh, similar to if you're in the meeting space currently. Sure. So it'll actually be above your eye level. Um, and that window much um like uh, somebody pointed out about the mother's room window, we would look to add frosted film to that as well for privacy. But yes, both both of the restrooms, new restrooms would have windows. Okay, and they will be frosted. Yes, well, at least the lower one. The upper one, probably the lower sash would be, <clears throat> excuse yeah. me, um, because that's, you know, it it's the back of the building, but it does impact the exterior appearance of the window. So if we can avoid frosting, that would be our preference, at least on the upper sash. Well, but mm -hmm. somebody outside definitely could look down into that basement. Definitely. Yeah. on yeah. So down on the lower, definitely that one would be fully frosted. I think up here we would just do the lower sash. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which, no. it, oh, which sorry. It, it, it actually may already be frosted 
because currently that is a small restroom for staff. Oh, okay. And just looking at the coloration of the glass. It does it, look like that. It may already be. Um, in the birth, uh, in the birth room, in the mother's room, I'm sorry, no births are <laughs> taking place in the library. I, I really hope <laughs> not. not. Yet. <laughs> um, it might be an option to have a horizontal um, window that would be higher. So this way you wouldn't have to frost it and there would still be, would still be light in there. I don't know. I don't know. It would be a significant price change. It's just something I'm tossing out there. Yeah, it could be. Um, I guess we were looking to keep it in line yeah, with yeah. this proportion, but yes. in this location, you know, there's really those That's windows. Why I'm saying it wouldn't those be windows fighting. around the side. Yeah. yeah. I'm just saying. Take, words. We can take a look at that. You're the architect. Yeah. <laughs> No, we can take a look at that. I think um, if it can avoid frosting and get transparent glass where we get better light coming into the room, I think that's a benefit that's worth that's worth investigating. All right. Well, again, this is very presentist thinking, but because the Dwinell wing of the library was built in the. Was that the 80s, David? I believe he said it was 1984. Yeah, correct. Um, because of that, I don't think, and it's not historically very old yet, I'm less worried about what you do with the windows on, in it than I, I would be much more concerned about doing something, adding new windows in the older part of the building. So I think it, to make it functional is really the key, the key element here. Because the whole wing was done to be functional, right? And make the building functional for the 20th century, late 20th century. Yeah, um, I, I, so. I would I would guess that the architect thought it looked good too, but we don't yeah. need to comment on that. <laughs> <laughs> Funny about that. <laughs> I'll probably be yeah. saying the same thing about my buildings in 30 years. I don't know. Well, certainly they will be <laughs> the young ones that are yeah. Are in high school, uh, starting to be in high school soon. Yep. <laughs> Times change. Well, yeah. Well, they do. I mean, but that's that's part of architecture. I mean, it does change, and every. Um, yeah, I've just had a dust up with a new textbook I'm publishing, and they've decided to put flower, little flower designs along with other motifs in the just they're just decorative motifs. And I think flower power is not what we want. We got rid of that years ago. What they think of it is nostalgia. <clears throat> so, oh, okay. Yeah. So everybody has their own point on this, and as long as it. it the the ex what we need to worry about is the exterior appearance of the building. Does it change it radically? And I don't think um, a window in the the 80s part of the building makes any difference one way or the other. Okay. Okay. So do we need David? I need your advice on this. Where do we need to go here? Do we need to to approve the whole project at this point. Yes, I'm going to offer to. I'm going to share my screen with a. Uh, a draft motion for someone to read. OK. Can you see that? Yes, we can. OK. Uh, so the upper part of this motion reflects the determination that you've already made relative to completeness of the application. So that's already been dealt with. Um, the second part of this portion here is what someone okay. could read and I've tried to based on the discussion I've tried to include uh, a comment or a condition um, which can be read and modified as the commission feels is appropriate so let me I'll see if I can make that yeah larger oops there we go that's there you go okay so just that uh, shaded portion if someone wants to read that, make that motion. Anybody want to go ahead? Then I go will. ahead, Becky. Uh, go ahead. Rebecca, do, do I put my name in there, Rebecca Bo? You could just say I. I move to approve 
the request of the city of Lebanon for certificate of approval pursuant to Article 4, Section 408.6 of the Zoning Ordinance to, con to reconfigure the front entrance of the Lebanon Library, including modifications to the granite stairs and railing, to include new walkway lighting along the ADA ramp, to install new rooftop equipment, and to install a new window at the library located at 9 East Park Street, tax map 92, lot 126, Lebanon, New Hampshire, in the LDD zone number HC 202001, with the following comments. The commission recommends that any new and replacement windows on the southerly facade adjacent to the proposed new restroom should be frosted or otherwise non-transparent for privacy. Thank you. Okay, we have a motion on the table. Who would like to second this motion? I can second and Mimi. Okay, Mimi seconds. So we have a motion. Is there any further discussion on this? I would just ask that the commission make sure you, I've, 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 drafted this as a comment if you would like to actually make it a condition you can certainly we can change the word comment to condition and we can change the word should to shall um i don't know if jason if you have any uh, is there any reason to be concerned with this suggestion uh, you're you're muted I think um, we could go ahead. I'm I'm willing to change that comment to condition and should the shall should be shall be shall be yeah. shall be frosted mm -hmm. and otherwise non-transparent. I think that's a good change. Yes. Oh. Okay. And the second okay. agrees with that. Um. I would simply say that for the ones that are existing, there needs to be like a frosted uh, glaze and for the new one depending on if they go vertical it should be frosted and if they go horizontal it can remain clear if they go horizontal and higher does that make sense it, would, it does would, would, would the commission trust that i will make sure that nobody can look through the windows to see people doing their business <laughs> Well, that's the issue, isn't Cause, it? Because right? that would really reflect poorly on me. <laughs> that, that would but, be yeah, that would be the issue. And again, it, to yeah. the extent that the commission talked about this and felt it was a good idea, I would ordinarily suggest that yeah. if you think it's a good idea and you want it to happen, you should make it a condition of approval. Uh, yeah. Again, I think, but I want there to be, I, I would suggest that there be reasonable flexibility uh, for Jason and the library trustees to to make the decisions that are appropriate uh, mm -hmm. for the project. The, the key is the privacy aspect. Exactly. Mm -hmm. There's a variety of ways they could achieve that. Um, and we'll, you know, we if, unless you unless you feel strongly that it should be done one particular way, then you could leave it. We could rephrase this. Um, to just require or, or or recommend that the architect and the and the applicant address privacy issues in these new areas or something mm -hmm. as appropriate. I have one yes. further question that just popped into my head. If we were to change it to a horizontal window, would it be a window or would it be a light? Light would not open. A window would open. Yeah, I would, say, I would think it would be a fixed panel. Yeah. Fixed, I know there was so a light. yes, a light. Yes. Right, because the building's air conditioned and heated. Yes. And there would be a fan in the bathroom. Yeah. Um, well, I would like to give the library, Sean and his people, and Jason and his people, uh, enough flexibility to make something that protects the privacy of anybody in the in the various restrooms that we're talking about, and. Uh, but also make sense in turn. I don't think we are too concerned about it aside from that issue, right? Correct. So, so let me, I think I have to stop sharing in order to make a change. Let me do okay. that for just a moment. Sure. Make a change. Um,
you understand what we're getting at, Jason, right? Oh, absolutely. I don't disagree yeah. with it. I, I, I yeah. mean, I'm, 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 I, I think your recommendation is wise and is probably something that we would have realized needed to be done at some point in the project. Um, it's just, what's the manner that it should be done? We're in no way trying to hamstring you. We're just no, trying to I make don't... it encourage certain things that will make um, the members of the public who use the library feel comfortable in any Absolutely. situation. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Absolutely. OK. But I'm assuming that you and Sean, when you actually get around to actually installing the windows and so forth, will know what makes minimal sense and without going overboard and making Correct. it so you can't if you can see the upper portion throughout the upper portion of the window, that may be there may be certain advantages of that than have it all frosted. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. See what you got. Okay. Let's try this. Um. So I, I don't know if you can you see that yet. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. We do. Okay. Yes, so that's perfect. It's, it's changed to a condition. The commission recommends that the applicant shall provide adequate privacy in any new and replacement windows in the southerly facade adjacent to proposed new restrooms. Uh, that's northern. That's, that's, that's northerly facade, I think. Uh, no, it it's faces southerly. south. <clears throat> it faces south. I when you say adjacent, does it mean next to or? Inside. Oh yeah, southerly. Yeah, you're right. Okay, you're right. I'm wrong. Is that? Um, uh, yeah, I wasn't sure about the adjacent, and I it didn't know. Be, if... It's in the space, basically. If there's a bathroom, or if there's a the receiving bathroom. area, there's a window, like privacy. Yeah. I mean that's that's what we're going for. Help yeah. me help me word it properly. Uh, facade comma in the proposed new restroom. Yeah, good, in excellent. The, and is it, it on the architectural drawings? Is the mother's what you called the mother's room? Is it is it called the mother's room on the architectural drawings, or is that it is. is it a restroom? Is it? No, it's called the mother's room. Does it okay? So mm -hmm. we can specifically mm -hmm. list that here. Okay. Proposed so in, new restrooms, including the mother's including room. Including the mother's room. So yep. in change adjacent to to in the proposed yep. new restrooms mm -hmm. and mother's room, including the mother's room. Okay. Mm -hmm. So I will make that change. You can you have a you have a motion and you have a second. They need to they each need to agree to the changes. And okay. then and then the commission can vote. Becky you agrees. Agree. And Mimi, did you agree? I agree. Okay. okay, so we're, we've all made the change. So we need to go through a we need to go through a roll call vote on this. Yes, you do. I'll turn this over to you, David. You're good at this. Okay, we'll go right down the list, Mr. Welsh. Uh, I say yes. Aye. Okay, Mimi Haynes. Yes. Becky Book. Yes. Linda Cole. Yes. Fran Hanchett. Yes. Okay, that's five to zero. That's great. Jason, thank you so much. This was a very, very informative uh, presentation. I wish they were all as as clear and to the point. <laughs> well, I appreciate that. They aren't always, I can assure you. <laughs> OK, well, I'll, that's two wins I've got with you. Yes. <laughs> Excellent. Well, um, thank you again for all your time. Uh, I assume you're done with me and I can hang up. Yes. yes, I just yes. want to say so much. we always yeah. enjoy working with you, Jason, and thank you for okay. coming tonight. Well, thank you. I do appreciate that. Have a good evening. You, you too. too. OK. So we've already voted on this now, right? So we're all done. Yes, you have. Move on to the next item, which is uh, the study items. Uh, Dana House Working Group. We haven't had any activity on the Dana House Working Group this month. No, I don't just believe. That the roof is, just that the roof is, is uh, mellowing the color is not so yes it, it, yes it's nice weathering it? very nicely yes it's it does look nice absolutely um the fountain let me go to the fountain working group um 
the old members of the fountain working group have all rotated off. Um, I am temporarily heading up the fountain working group. We're going to look for some new members, but I thought with the COVID going on, we're not going to be dealing with fountain working group issues for a, and probably until next spring. So I think we won't be doing very much on that. But the fountain has been officially turned over to the city. Lock, lock, stock, and barrel, as I understand. Is that correct as far as you understand, David? That is my understanding, yes. Yeah. And so it's, uh, and the ladies on the working group have all rotated off. So now it's a matter of trying to rebuild the working group. I will, um, I will spearhead the fountain working group activities over the next few months. Probably won't, don't, won't do very much until next spring, but I will be taking over that function in Linda May's absence. Okay. If that's all right with everybody, if there's objection, we can discuss it, but lacking an objection, I will take on that function. Um, let's see, special projects working group. Mimi, did you want to talk about anything that you've been doing lately? Um, I think we had a follow up, but that wouldn't be in that item. And then um, whatever I'm working on, I believe we were mentioning that we would address in October. OK, that's fine. That's good. OK, um, so now we'll move to other business. The CLG grant update. Um, Rebecca Owens and I and Mimi, you were, I think, part of that discussion. We reviewed the the proposals for the applications for, or the we'd sent out a request for qualifications, an RFQ. And we got four um, four people who sent in materials. All four had had um, here, uh, Lebanon experience before. However, two of them I had never interacted with as far as I'm I'm aware, but I may have, but I don't remember having had it. Um, one of those was Lisa Pespasian, who's done a lot of grant work for us. She did the Crafts Avenue. She did our citywide project. Um, and then she did for, I don't actually know who supervised that, but one of the offsets that um, Twin Pines had to put up was money for um, the Maple Maple Street in West Lebanon, um, his, a review of the historic properties there. Sort of a lead up to a historic district, really. And she did that. Um, we had Lisa Massault, who also applied. Now, when she was just out of graduate school, she did the study for, for the Sunapee, I'm forgetting what that one's called, David. Uh, but the Sunapee Regional Historic planning commission. planning commission. She did a survey of uh, most of the properties in town, the older properties in town, and we have books in the library, and I think David has a copy in his office of all these properties, things that she worked on. So she had long history with, with Lebanon. I've never met Lisa, but that's because she moved to Massachusetts some years ago. I think she was just out of graduate school when she did the study, and she wrote the original documentation on the on the downtown um, historic district. Then we had two people. One person had worked with um, uh, with Rogers House when they did that project a few years ago. You may all some of you may remember that. And then the other person did something out at Westboro Yard that I didn't even know had happened until I got her application. Um, in any event, um, one of my concerns as one of the reviewing panel was that I think we could, should encourage them to at least, if they're going to do work in town and apply to the Heritage to work on our grants, they should let us know what they've been up to at the time that they're doing doing these projects but in any event um so we decided we considered the four of them and there was no question mimi you were part of this so correct me if i if i'm speaking in 
in error here. But my impression was that we all agreed that Lisa Pespasian actually had the most experience relevant to our project downtown and uh, seemed to show one of the project, the problems that Lisa Massault had was that although I think her work has been quite improved since she was just out of grad school 30 years ago or 35 years ago, um, her presentation in what she sent to us was kind of cursory. Uh, she had a lot of lists of projects, but she didn't really speak to the issues, which I think set her back. Um, in any event, we chose Lisa Pespasian, who worked on the Crafts Avenue project and the citywide project, and she's agreed. So we offered it to her and she's agreed. I have written, I got new note cards from Vistaprint, so I wrote new notes to everybody that had applied to thank them and invite them to apply again for other projects because we want to keep a list of people that we can call upon when we need to. Um, and I did suggest in the cases where I felt that they would have benefited had we known about what they had been doing before, that they keep us posted about what they're doing. And they can do that by email or a phone call or a note card or something. Anything would be fine. So I did send that out, but we have hired Lisa. I must, we know that um, governor and council have approved the project, so that means the money's available to us so we can actually get started with the work. I have no idea what Lisa's timeline is going to be. And of course the COVID thing just completely mucks everything up. But I'm assuming that Lisa, when she gets to work on it, will be as efficient as she's been in the past. So I'm not particularly worried about that. Um, David, am I correct that she has until about this time next year or maybe August of next year to finish up the project? That is, I believe that's correct. The money goes through September 30th, but I think the schedule uh, has her completing the, uh, the final deliverables somewhat earlier than that, perhaps August sure. of 2021. Just as a quick update, um, there was... Uh, Rebecca Owens participated in a kickoff meeting last Thursday with Lisa Papazian and members of DHR. I was on another, um, in another meeting at that time and was unable to participate, mm -hmm. but uh, they've talked about the basic over, you know, overview of the project and the schedule and so on. Um, and as far as the city goes, we are still um, pulling together the paperwork for the professional services agreement and the purchase order mm -hmm. uh, to formally retain uh, Lisa for this project. Mm -hmm. um, that should be done in the next week or so. Okay. Were you part of this meeting? I was not able to participate in the kickoff meeting with DHR and Lisa on Thursday morning. I was. So, oh, sorry. I meant, I meant Becky book. Were you part of? I was no, no, it okay. was Rebecca Owens. No, I know. Uh, sorry, when I hear. Oh, I'm confusing. I'm sorry. Go ahead. Yeah. Sorry, yeah. I, I may have misspoken. No, 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 no. I was uh, hearing the daughters of the American Revolution, which is not at all what you were saying. No, and I was wondering what was the overlap with this. I had so many more questions coming. Sorry, no, this was division of <laughs> no, history. No, this is all me. Yeah. Perfect. Thank you. Yep. So that's the, that's filling in some of the, the details on that project. Um, do you have an idea when Lisa is going to actually start work or has she started work already, David? I would expect perhaps by the end of this month. OK. That's good. Um, I would there because there are a couple of issues that I would like to we're, this this first phase of the project is going to cover um, basically updating all the documentation on all the properties around the green and lead up to the second phase, which is going to actually tackle whether we what the possibilities for expanding the footprint of the National Register Historic District is. And we've got the five properties that are in the in the footprint that need to be updated. Those will be no problem, I think. 
Um, but one of the areas, for example, might be to include the properties on the mall as part of the historic district. So it, so our two historic districts are co coincident on that. And then we've also talked about other areas that we might expand. Um, I, I, I happened to speak to um, Benta Torgerson, who, although she's retired, when uh, Trip Anderson left uh, with a fairly significant financial deficit at Ava, she came back to help out, and she still got her foot in at Ava. And I had a chance to ask her. I was just curious if we considered trying to expand the historic district down Bank Street, down to say on the Ava side, down to the Cragen House, which is at the end of the block which is that really pretty old house at the end of the, the block that Aaron Craig and a former senator from New Hampshire was resident in. I was wondering what Benta and representing Ava Gallery would think about having, um, having their building in the historic district, which meant any changes to the exterior of the building would have to be monitored by us, right? And she said she wouldn't in general have any problem with it, but the one thing she was concerned about was if they went to put solar panels on the roof of uh, Ava Gallery, they would of course be on the, the south facing side of the building which faces the street on the roof. Um, and would what, that would be her one concern if the historic district was, if the, his, the Heritage Commission and that's the historic, historic District Commission would have some objection to that. She wouldn't want to be involved with it because they want to, they want to go solar eventually. they just have been, it's just a matter of uh, getting their ducks in a row for that. Um, so I have a question that my question is, what's the word on that, David? If we had, if we did expand to include Ava Gallery in the historic district, they would of course have to front if they have any change to the building just as um, as Jason did tonight for the the library building but if they wanted to put solar panels on the on the roof that might be somewhat visible from the street would we have to worry about that I think the board may or the commission may have some flexibility there obviously um, just as a reminder the the regulations that the commission enforces are part of the zoning ordinance, which is the city council's document uh, mm -hmm. to update. Um, I suppose it is possible, and and I think it's I actually think it's a very good issue to be discussed. And there may be others uh, mm -hmm. along the same lines that the commission might want to discuss whether it wants to regulate those kinds of things. Um, yeah. And I think part of part of I forget whether it's phase one of this CLG grant or phase two, um, but there was going to be in addition to considering the expansion of the district itself, there was going to be some review um, of, zoning, of yep. whether of whether the regulations that you currently work with are the right ones um, and whether there are amendments that might be appropriate. And I think that would be a good conversation to have with Lisa and maybe the DHR folks mm -hmm. as to whether um, whether the it's appropriate for the commission to sort of exempt certain kinds of improvements like solar panels because you want to you want to facilitate certain things you don't want to uh, well, for example, it is yeah. it is city policy. It is, as I understand, David, it's city policy to go solar as much as possible, or go um, renewable energy as much as possible, and solar being one of the easiest things. And having just gone solar myself in my own house this spring, um, now mine is facing south facing, but also doesn't have anybody. There's only a couple spots on the road you can actually see my roof. So it doesn't really matter, but Ava is in a little bit different situation being right downtown. 
but I think we need to this is one of the things that I think we can use this grant to try and consider these zoning issues because this is a zoning kind of issue or I agree. That's what I was thinking, right? I agree. And there and again, there may be other other development components like replacement sure. of windows and things that that are appropriate to leave out or to or, or maybe appropriate to include in. So uh, I think that'll be a good thing for the commission to discuss with its consultant when we get to that point. Yeah. Well, I just wanted to mention it to everybody because this is what's on my mind right now. And as we get started on this new grant and updating the updating all the documentations and getting the five new properties considered contributing and so forth. Um, I think this is we need to be thinking, uh, thinking ahead and we need to follow. We don't want to have restrictions that make it impossible for us to follow city politi policy on going green. Because I think we, the, the fires in California, if, if we didn't believe that and the hurricanes that we have all the time, more often than we used to, they should tell us that we need to be addressing the, the climate issues through, through renewable energy. And also it's energy efficient and it's cheaper for the city and for that's why we didn't we put solar on the top of uh, the new city hall, David. I think the plan is to do that eventually. Yeah, I mean that's my understanding, and um, I'd like to encourage that as much as possible. We've got to get real for the the real world con mm -hmm. constructs that we're dealing with. So. I do see Fran's. Fran has her hand up. Oh, go ahead, Fran. I'm just wondering, as far as solar on Ava. I've seen people put it on their lawns. Is it possible for them to put enough solar panels on their building in the back that would supply Ava? On the new building, they might be able to, um, where the sculpture garden is, or the where that sculpture down down, down below. Yeah, yeah, that um, building already has solar. Oh, does yeah. it? But it's not, it can't supply Ava? Not I, enough. I don't know how much they utilize. I, I know they have some solar panels on the gable or, or the, the, the portion of the roof that faces west towards Colburn Park. Mm -hmm. uh, there are some panels there. And then the, the, the lower, the newer building in back uh, has, I think they have more or less maxed it out in terms of the number of panels they could fit on that roof. Okay. Just the thought. Well, yep. I think we need to, if Ava can produce all of its own power to supply all of its needs, that will not only be good for the environmentally, but it'll be economically good for them because it'll pay for their, for their energy needs for electricity. And that would be their goal. And I, it's just like with every every other project in the city that we've been been hearing about. We've had several come up in the in the historic district recently in the last few years. So, and even the fountain that we put up in uh, Glenwood Cemetery, we've got a solar panel there that powers that one. So, I think that's we should be following city policy on this. But I just want to mention that tonight, just so that we we're all on the same page that we understand that that's one of the directions that I want us to see us go to follow that part of city city policy. Um, okay, that's Ava there. Oh yeah, but we've got, they've got this whole roof that they could put a pan, just an array of panels on if they wanted to. It wouldn't even be visible. Is that existing, David? Yes. I'm sorry, my name is not David, but I'm a okay. Well, I didn't know who put this up. <laughs> I it's think I Mimi. see some solar panels also on the yes, yes. exactly. Yeah, they it seems yeah. like they already started on both sides actually of that roof. Yeah. But you know they could they could put 
low low uh, rise solar panels on that flat portion of the roof. It could be covered with solar panels in various arrays oh, as well. Oh, there's definitely a setup that could be achieved there. Yeah. On that roof. Well, I think I think it's a no brainer for Ava to want to use all this power to all the solar power to power their plant. Um, they have gone, you know, they're lead certified for silver. And uh, I know they have been wanting to do full solar event, you know, eventually down the road, but it was too costly before when mm -hmm. they redid the building. Uh, but I can assure you that as as a new solar guy um, with my house, it's a surprisingly inexpensive project um, in terms of the costs of power. Mm -hmm. So anyway, I just mentioned that so that those are one of that's one of the things that we need to think about. Um, and I think David has has hit the nail on the head here when it comes time to talk about zoning issues. Zoning, this is the kind of thing that we need to think about to make sure that it's it's relevant and how to address the fact that it's 21st century. Yeah. OK, um, I want to turn now to um, Lebanon. Let's see, Lebanon Historic District Landmarks. I haven't I finished these this afternoon. I've got two projects. I'm going to show you these. I will have Rebecca send them around. I don't know if you can see this. This is for the wood house. And I'll read the passage that I've written. It's just a draft, but I'd like to have everybody have a have a thought about it. But James Wood House at 523 Meriden Road. This would go in a threefold bro brochure or something like that about the that we've done in the past or the equivalent of it, and it'd be put online. Built about 1925 by Ephraim Wood for his family in the southern part of town. The Wood House descended to his eldest son, James, who lived there in the 1860s. The house represents a typical Lebanon farmhouse of two and a half stories, formerly with a barn at the back. We know from the diary of James Wood that the family put up a runaway slave for the night on 1st of June, 1862, early in the Civil War. It is one of the few standing structures in Lebanon that highlights the relationship between Lebanon and the and the fight against slavery. So that's my blurb um, that would go. This would be going in the threefold or whatever we decide to do with it. The second one is this is this picture is. Let me see if I can get. There we go. This is the. McAllister House, I believe it is. Yeah, it's at nine Seminary Hill Road. Um, built around 1800 and expanded upon during the 19th century, this structure with its steep gables and beautiful slate roof is an example of the early structures in West Lebanon. The house is notable for its wonderful slate roof and its steep gables. Besides its physical properties and its aesthetic design, this house is, according to oral tradition, a home that occasionally put up runaway slaves on their way to Canada. So I thought these were... The only thing that I haven't mentioned is whether we associate either one of these write ups with the fact that we had highlighted this at the Black History Month commemoration in February. But I think that we don't need that. We can just have these as they both deal with with runaway slaves and so forth. So I think we can let the description stand on its own. Um, what I'd like to do, I, I finished this today and I didn't get a chance to send it around to everybody, but I thought I would read it to everyone. So this is what I've got for the threefold for these two properties. Does something like this seem appropriate to the rest of you? I'd like to get a sort of general consensus if we're on the right track or not. Yes. Um, I just wanted to see, is the last one a property you would be proposing in replacement of the Dunkin Donut or is this no no yeah. these are things that emerged from the Black History Month event that we did these oh, are the okay. two runaway slave properties that we had talked about and one happens to be just a beautiful house um 
it's fairly early 1800. It's a beautiful house with these steep gables and just an ex awesome uh, slate roof. Um, it could go on that grounds alone, but I think it really is um, its historical connection with the African American experience in Lebanon is, I think, rather important. No, the, no, I agree with that. So there's no questions about that. I think that this is a great property to be showcasing in uh, West Lebanon. Yeah. So, um, so the question I have is: these are the sort of blurbs I want. I want to put these on the the Lebanon landmark property list. They would be so it would raise our number by two more, and we would offer them. Uh, the plaques if now the owners have to agree to be on the on the landmark property list and i can't recall what rebecca had told me about that rebecca owens had told me about that i thought she had sent out a letter to both of these property owners do you know the update the status of that david i think she did uh and my recollection was that they were both uh open to being okay honored or designated That's wonderful so if everybody's acceptable with this i will follow up with rebecca owens and get these letters sent out to these folks and um, uh, we'll decide on i hate to be giving out plaques in when it's dangerous and with the dartmouth students just coming back to the region i'm a little bit apprehensive about doing anything right now until we see where that goes um but i'd like to I think it's going to take us at least a month before we get the notice back to these fo these homeowners or landowners, property owners, and we hear back from them and get them set up something. Um, we can do it virtually on the uh, at a city hall presentation that can be arranged, and that would put it back a few months, a few weeks. So we're probably talking about early November, right after the election, a week or so after the election, perhaps. If we get, I want to stay out of the way of the election because I know the city clerk is absolutely up to her eyeballs and election stuff. Mm -hmm. um, but anyway, I will send this around through Rebecca Owens tomorrow so that everybody has a chance to read this. There's nothing sacred about the language I've used here. I've just tried to keep it simple and to the point as we have traditionally done. So if that makes sense to everybody. Yeah. Yes. But yeah. I'd like everybody to review it and then you can send comments back to Rebecca and she'll get those to me. We can change. There's nothing written in stone here. Absolutely nothing. Um, that's not my goal, but I just want to move this forward. Um, the other pro property that we've talked about for a landmark um, property is the Dunkin' Donuts. Is there any pro any uh, movement on that? Um, Mimi? Yes, so I have spoken with Laurel Stavis okay. and uh, I just wanted to make sure we understood really um, uh, where her intention of listing the property was coming from and then we were talking a bit about what was left of the original fabric of the building and whether or not um, the architectural um, era that it was portraying was significant and um, also I think that the angle we were also mentioning was whether or not it was appropriate in terms of community significance. And I wanted to see what, um, where she was coming from on these. And that was the latest. She was, so she, she was agreeing that the fabric of the building was not the aspect to be celebrating, neither the building itself, but that, um, and I think she, she um, brought up a few valid points that, and I'm sure she'll be pleased to know that we're considering now this new property in West Lebanon, that there were not enough um, recognition on the architectural aspect in West Lebanon. And so although the Dunkin' Donut is not the building, maybe that would be celebrated first. Her, um, her angle was that it was one of the building that really paved the way to the expansion of West Lebanon, both in terms of stores and um, I guess uh, really development is the key word here. So she thought in that sense that it was important. Um, but again, I think that we, we came to an under understanding that there was a need in West Lebanon to be more active in terms of buildings we have uh, and proposing these in the future. Um, 
and then that kind of led to the whole discussion of mitigating the disconnection we have between Lebanon and West Lebanon and bridging this and basically mm -hmm. that's what really the discussion was about so uh, we came to the we came to the understanding that um, it was not an appropriate building and she was like very peaceful about it she she was agreeing to it and then it's funny because uh, Rob, I was discussing with her the exact same building you you are you have just talked about, and she was like, "Yes, of course, that would make more sense." So, um, I think just for the future, it's not. We can take note of her concerns. I think that they're not not funded, but the bottom line is we're not moving forward with the Dunkin' Donut. Okay. Well. For those of you who are newer to the commission, um, I just want to say that my general feeling has always been that if we have a property downtown that we put on the, the landmark property list, I like to do something in West Lebanon at the same time. Yeah. And when I can, I throw in one on East Lebanon as well, not to forget that village either. Um, but there's less to be putting on over in East Lebanon these days. Um, in this case, the two that I'm proposing are ones that we highlighted at the um, Black History Month event, and one's at the very south end of town, near mm -hmm. Plainfield on the Plainfield Road, and the other one is in West Lebanon, right opposite Dana House. So I think we don't have to worry about distribution of properties for this go-round. So I want to go forward with these two. I will send around the blurb through Rebecca to Owens tomorrow. And uh, anybody who has any commentary on the language, we can always change it. There's nothing written in stone here. I have drawn the photos that I've included here right off of the, the property database that David's people keep up. Because they're actually nice images. They look nice. and. I thought they would work just fine for this. Um, and they're they're as good as anything I've taken with my camera. So I thought these were fine. Um, there is, again, nothing that I'm submitting is written in stone. It can all be edited and changed in any way anybody likes. So feel free to edit or make comments on it, OK? But I will send that around. And um, in the next couple of weeks, get back to me. And then we'll we'll start talking about um, how we award these plaques to these landowners or the property owners. Okay. All right. So that's done. Um, let's see. Uh, the seminar, the, the last item we have on this is the report on the seminar, uh, by me and, uh, and Mimi. Uh, I, I listened to about eight hours of the seminar. I found it very, very interesting. I actually made comment, uh, made contact with one of the guys who was talking in Philadelphia. Um, he was dealing with contemporary kinds of projects, projects that were in our lifetimes, maybe not Mimi's lifetime, but my lifetime or Linda's or, or Becky's in our lifetimes when we were young and that we might know. And, uh, trying to make those a real part of the historic preservation of of aspects. And so um, I agree with everything Mimi said about the Dunkin' Donuts. I do think that we have tried to do some of this with the uh, Dairy Twirl, which we put on the list, Muriel's Donuts, which we put on the list, and the little store, which we put on the list some years ago. And I think it's really important that we continue to do things like that. So I would encourage us to think for the next few months um, so that next spring when we go around <laughs> thinking about new projects we can put on the landmark property list, we think about things that are local projects that have meaningful significance to the community, something on the order of the little store or the dairy twirl or Muriel's Donuts. Or Dunkin' Donuts if it weren't just a national chain with a national chain um, architecture that doesn't have much of its original fabric left, you know? So that's my thinking. Mm -hmm. uh, did you want to comment on that, Mimi? 
No, I am actually, this month I have been closing out my projects and I've been working a lot, but um, yep. once in a while I listen to a bit of it when I come back for lunch. So I don't have something um, clear and crisp to comment on for this for now. Okay. Um, I thought the there was one thing that I got from the seminar, the webinar that we listened to, that they were talking about ways of involve, in, involving and integrating the community into projects we were doing. And I'm thinking about if we go to having a, a new historic district in West Lebanon, we need to, to let the public know about it. And one of the ways that I saw in one of the one of the presentations just struck me as just mind-blowingly simple, but really effective. They put a banner across the street that said, site of proposed new historic district. Right? Sounds good. Sounds good. Yeah. And I could see that at the bottom of Maple at Seminary Hill, right? And I could see it up at the top and, uh, and say a Dana Street or something like that, right? Yeah. So that the front and back of Maple, if we wanted to consider Maple as one of these historic districts, <coughs> they're somewhere along the line. But it would be simple. It wouldn't be too costly to do that. And it would sure invite the community to comment. And we could put otherwise, you know, comments, a comments mm -hmm. page somewhere on a web page whether it's Facebook or something online with the city. It doesn't matter to me, but that was the one thing that struck me as innovative to me. I hadn't thought about that, but it was such a simple way of communicating with the public. Mm -hmm. We got a new proposal for a historic district and this is it. Now you can see it, right? As you drive by or walk by in the case. So that was the thing that I found very useful about that. and. Like I said, I did write to this one fellow from, I'm forgetting his name now because I wasn't thinking about this today when I was getting ready for the meeting. Um, I did write to this one fellow and because I thought he is, he's wanting to make it not just about 18th century buildings, but about buildings from the 19th century and the 20th century. And in time, by 2050, he'll be starting to think about things in the early 21st century. Those architectural features that actually have done something to shape his community of Philadelphia. And I thought this guy is was really interesting. So we started up a conversation and uh, I have his email address so I can follow up with him. But I, it sometimes is useful to have somebody from a bigger place look at our fairly parochial concerns because we're in the middle of the backwaters here. But I think what we're doing is we're trying to do some of the things that they're doing, but they've got a huge physical plant to work with and pick and choose amongst. Mm -hmm. And we've got much less. So we have to be careful about what we choose to, to focus on. But anyway, that's what I had to, to say about that. But I did find it a very useful thing. And just having a few people to write to, to make contact with, I thought was helpful. So anyway, is there any other comments that anyone else wants to make before we close off the evening? Yes, I would like to know, uh, David, if you know about how many plates we have left. I talked with Rebecca about that and she thought it was at least five. Okay, all right. We, I think they are in the basement of City Hall still, while we are in our temporary location. Um, so we'll, we will find them and, and count them specifically, but it was more than, certainly more than two. Okay. Yeah. So we'll be all right. We don't have to order any more for this go round is what you're saying, right? Correct. Good. Well, I think that's great. Any other thoughts, comments, concerns? In that case, uh, thank you, David. I would entertain a motion to adjourn. I'll do it. <laughs> okay, Linda's got a motion to adjourn. Do we have a second? I'm I'll looking at you, Ms. Book. Okay, no. <laughs> we've got Mimi. That's good. Okay. Um, all right, so we have a 
Can we call the roll, David? Yes. Uh, Rob Welsh. Uh, yes. Mimi Haynes. Yes. Becky Book. Yes. Linda Cole. Yes. Fran Hanchett. Yes. That's okay. unanimous. Well, thank you, everybody. I do appreciate I do look forward to a day when we can all meet in person again. I'm kind of missing that, but this is going fairly well. I'm really impressed with mm -hmm. how much we've done. This project tonight was a lot more complicated than it seemed at first. And uh, I thought we did a good job getting, well, Jason is an excellent presenter, but I thought it was a nice way of, of discussing this. I think we got everything we needed out of it. So that was good. Ray and Rebecca, 